talk about no but a, a very critical time here we are going from an exploration company pure exploration to a producing company and this is a it's an absolute pleasure to speak with folks this is a picture of our first gold bar in fact and this is really the first of many many to come all right i urge people to review cautionary statements our presentation is on our website uh, you can read this at your leisure Okay, yeah, a little background about Novo as a company. Our capital structure includes 213 million shares out. Uh, currently our cash balance is about 62 million Canadian. Uh, a lot of this money came in through an equity raise as well as a senior debt facility that we took out as part of a recent transaction in which we acquired uh, Millennium Minerals from IMC Holdings, a Singaporean firm. You can see our shareholder base here includes Kirkland Lake Gold and Eric Sprott as our largest single shareholders, but recently joined by IMC from whom we bought the Millennium Assets, uh, which closed in early September. Mark Creasy, who's been a long-term shareholder and helped uh, pick up the initial land position for Novo. He remains at 6.5% as uh, is Newmont, which is still a very large shareholder. Yeah, you can see here our project. It's in Northwest Australia. This is uh, where I'm going to start the discussion. Nullagine is in the Pilbara, which is part of uh, the greater Iron Ore province in this region. But we're now going to change the perceptions here. We, we think there's room for a significant gold producer in this region. This uh, acquisition fast tracks us to production. Uh, we are now on our way to become Australia's next gold producer. Uh, this acquisition uh, encompasses a mill. Uh, this is a processing facility that's been operating at about 1.88 million tons per annum for the past five years. Along with that comes all the infrastructure, the tailings uh, storage facility, uh, power station, admin offices, laboratory, as well as a very large uh, camp. So this puts us in a great position to, to become a miner in this field. This uh, is a great place to work. Western Australia, as most people know, have done a great job containing COVID. Their mining industry is vibrant and it's, uh, it's really ranked number one jurisdictionally around the planet. So this is, I can't think of a better place to operate. Okay, here was our land holding. We have about 14,000 square kilometers across the Pilbara region. Well, we're going to start the discussion around Nulligan in the yellow circle on the right. Through this acquisition, we combine our Beaton's Creek project, our most advanced asset, with the, the Nulligan processing facility. Again, that processing facility has been operating at just under 2 million tons per annum for the past five years. Beaton's Creek, our project is only 10 kilometers away. We currently have a resource of about 900,000 ounces uh, indicated and inferred. The grades range from about two to three grams per ton. When in production, I think this will prove to be one of the highest grade open pit mines in Australia. Our metallurgical work at Beaton's Creek indicates we should see very good recoveries over 95% from this Nulligan processing facility. It's a gravity CIL plant and it's ideally suited both in terms of size and capacity for our operation. Here you can see a map of the region. Uh, Nulligan is on the left, Beaton's Creek deposits immediately adjacent to Nulligan, and the mill uh, shown about 10 kilometers south is easily truckable down the highway. By combining the land here, the yellow and the blue, uh, this gives us effectively 95% control over this important mining district, allows us access to a lot of highly prospective ground. Here you can see an aerial shot of the mill. Uh, it is a gravity CIL mill. It's a sag mill. It's been operating, uh, like I said, just under 2 million ton per annum. And it's produced about 540,000 ounces of gold over the past uh, seven years during operation. It was placed into care and maintenance. Uh, it was, uh, it's been kept in very good shape. We are currently revamping a few things. We're lining the tanks. And we're also installing a new gravity circuit. We have a lot of coarse gold, so we anticipate high gravity recovery 
and therefore we're putting in a much more substantial gravity recovery circuit. Another aerial shot, we're looking eastward. The mill and the admin offices are on the right-hand side. The tailings area is in the back on the left. That has plenty of capacity for several years production. The 230 room camp is also on the left and Beaton's Creek is off to the left, just off the image. Again, it's about 10 kilometer haul. The deposits at Beaton's Creek are somewhat unusual. These are conglomerate deposits. They're layers of rock that were laid down about 2.7 billion years ago. The layers are anywhere from one to two meters thick. And the gold occurs in the matrix between boulders and cobbles in these layers. The gold can be very coarse. Here you see a test mine. This is very easily mined. These things are flat lying. The layers are flat and they, they are on top of the ridges and, and spurs through this region. Down here in the lower left, you can see uh, an exercise where we trial mine. We isolated a bed of conglomerate and mined 30,000 tons. It was very easy to do. You can see in the lower right, the conglomerate is easily distinguishable from the footwall sandstone, which is bright white. So it was very easy to, to selectively mine. Here's an aerial shot of the Beaton's Creek deposit. Again, it's flat lying, so it covers a very broad area. The conglomerate layers are stacked anywhere from two to six thick in any given location. So there's uh, multiple layers in any given spot. This area on the left is wide open to exploration. We announced some news earlier this week that we've now started to find gold out into this region. So we think we can grow the resource very quickly. You can see Nulligan here, and then the mill is straight down the highway to the lower right. Here's our resource. Again, it's about 900,000 ounces indicated and inferred, about two to three grams per ton. And once again, about the highest grade deposit operating in open pit in Australia. We've staffed up our team uh, very dramatically over the past few months, brought on a mine manager, Rob Humphrey, some, uh, our CEO is well known in Australia, is able to attract very good people. We brought on Chris Martin, as our manager of operations. Brad Woodland is a mining manager. And then we have in, in the office and other staff, uh, Don Frost, Chris Gotti, Castelluca, all important people as part of our team. Now I'm gonna talk a bit about the, the expansion of Beaton's Creek. We're gonna look at how we're gonna grow this deposit. Now that we're going into production, we wanna start building mine life immediately. We're not gonna waste time. We see opportunity to extend the deposit in natural directions, such as what you see on the image here. These beds of kilometer continue laterally for many kilometers. So it's very easy to project uh, that these conglomerates should be uh, continuous outside of the current planned pit models that you see here. You can also see we have beds of conglomerate underneath the existing resource as well. Those are open for ex exploration. This cross section looks in the, at, at right angles to the previous one. The previous cross section was here. You can see the beds of conglomerate actually dip into the basin and how far they go, we don't know, but we have a few drill holes out in this area that suggest the conglomerates are there. They're very continuous and they might go for many kilometers. If so, we might be looking at an open, uh, excuse me, an underground mine in addition to open pit mining here in a few years time. Now I'm gonna talk about the Eastern Pilbara region. You can see in the yellow circle here, we have a lot of prospects that we own that we can now exploit through this opportunity of production at Beaton's Creek. This includes things like Tauga to Tauga, very high grade deposit we own. We think there's potential for several hundred thousand ounces and maybe three to five grams in an open pit setting there. That could be added immediately to the mine feed. Virgin Creek and Contact Creek are conglomerates, much like Beaton's Creek. We, we think they're very big systems and we see exceptional potential like we see at Beaton Creek, perhaps a few million ounces in each one. Blue Speck Geese and these other uh, listed here, you see including the Creasy tenure and also on Millennium's tenure. These are deposits that are close to the mill. There are areas where we know there's good exploration potential and they've simply not been fully explored. We think through exploration, a dedicated exploration program, we can quickly add resources out in, in the country right adjacent to the mill. 
but it gets better. We have a lot of ground in the West Pilbara that we have conglomerate similar to Beaton's Creek, but it is quite some distance. You can see here, it's about 500 kilometer drive from, from the West Pilbara to the East Pilbara. How are we going to exploit these? I'm gonna show you. We have two conglomerate layers at Karatha. We have a lower conglomerate, this yellow unit, and then we have an upper one, the gray unit. These things are flat. They're easily mineable in an open pit. You can see here, these would be very easy to access from the surface. They're very continuous. We've sampled these over about four kilometers strike and we get very coarse gold. Now the coarse gold makes it very challenging to assess the grade in these deposits, but the coarse gold lends itself to something very interesting. We do know from bulk sampling these areas that we have grades ranging from about one to six grams. So it's very similar in Be to Beaton's Creek in most respects, except for this coarse gold. This is how we plan to move it forward. We've been using mechanical sorters. These are sorters uh, built in Europe by both Tamra and Steinert, the two leading sorting companies. These machines actually uh, take crushed rock material. And as it travels down a conveyor, the, the rock particles uh, that have gold are identified and then they're blasted off the end of the conveyor belt. Here you can see a rock particle that's actually pushed by jets of air over into the, the collection bin over on this side. At the end of this, we have a very small concentrate, perhaps a few kilograms, but it has the gold in it. You can see the X-ray image in the lower right here. These dark particles are gold nuggets, like you see here, embedded in the rock. So what does this mean? It means we can take several tons of rock and reduce it to several kilograms of concentrate and capture most of the gold. Then we could truck this material over to Beaton's Creek and add it to the mill stream. In other words, we can now, we now have a path for pr processing material at Karatha. We have bought a, a mechanical sorter, one of these machines, and we plan to do a trial exercise uh, of this starting late this year, early next year, in which we want to see if we can uh, make this viable to transport concentrate to Nelligan and grow our production. Lastly, I'm going to talk about the Edgina project. This in its own right, very important project for Novo. You can see here, Edgina is in the, in the center of the Pilbara. And in this area, you can see a big river system that's washed away the conglomerates from this surface and washed the gold down onto the flats by the ocean. The country is very, very flat. What happened here, you have gravels distributed over this flat surface that actually have the gold that came out of the and is now reconstituted in the gravels. And these gravels are, are extensive. You can see here an image, it's extremely large flat country, many, many hundreds of square kilometers. We've been taking bulk samples of those gravels and producing lots of uh, coarse grain gold concentrate. We see a, a potential for a highly viable uh, gold system here that is akin to the systems you see elsewhere in the world, like the skeleton coast in Namibia, where De Beers has been mining, not gold, but diamonds but it's a similar geology. It's a flat sheet-like conglomerate, or sorry, gravel horizon that's laid down across the, the surface uh, along the ocean coast. Our grades are quite good. Uh, in the, the channels, we have up to 1.7 gram per cubic meter. And in the peripheries, we have about 0.3 to 0.6 gram. These are better than most alluvial operations. Again, we think this will be a highly viable operation. Here you can see bulk samples that we've collected. We're doing systematic bulk sampling to explore for these gravels across a big, big area right now. Once we identify areas, we do systematic sampling on a grid and that allows us to see where we could potentially go mining. In this case, this is the mining lease at Edgina and we do plan a trial mining exercise on these higher grade areas uh, next year. Now that mining lease is right here. The previous area was up here you can see the scale of the system. We're talking about literally tens and tens of square kilometers. All of this red surface that you see is laid, uh, is that gravel horizon that's laid on top of the surface. This is all free dig, easy to recover. Uh, it's extensive. It's something we envision mining in a continuous mining fashion uh, going forward. Look, we, uh, we're moving this project forward as though it's going to be a standalone operation. And we think it could be as significant, if not more so, than the Beaton's Creek operation. 
So in short, what do we have? We have a uh, traditional mill now at Nulligan. Our Beaton's Creek deposit will provide base load for that mill. And then we can exploit these other deposits in this region. Then we're gonna bring in things like Comet Well and Purdy's reward. We'll concentrate coarse gold and bring it over here to Nulligan, which will add our production profile. Then lastly, you can see out here at Edgen, we have that huge terra surface and we, we uh, anticipate mining this continuously on a standalone basis, uh, much like Nulligan here. So we'll have two operations in the next say three to five years, we anticipate two significant operations that will catalyze us to become a significant mid-tier producer in Australia. Hi, could, you may like to wrap up uh, if you want to answer a few questions uh, here waiting for you. I, I am wrapping up right now. So uh, these are a contact for IR and I'm always happy to answer questions. Gilbert. Great, uh, Quinton. So let's get started with a few questions here. The first one from David C. He's asking you, is your theory still sound in terms of the type of deposit here you're comparing with the, in South Africa? Is, is it uh, still very similar to what you're looking for? Yes, when we came here, the basis was a direct comparison with South Africa. What we found is our gold is quite a bit coarser. That's the one big difference. But otherwise, the continuity of the beds is very good. We see extensive deposits. Uh, so in all respects, they are the same, except for the gold is much, much coarser. Great. Uh, the second one coming from Andy. Uh, so who are your major shareholders at this point? Yes, Kirkland Lake, Eric Sprott, IMC are the top three shareholders. Okay. And the third one uh, from Christine. So uh, how much cash do you have on hand? So what are you going to do with these all these cash here? Yeah, so we have about 62 million right now. We're recapitalizing the mill. We're doing things like uh, relining the tanks and buying the gravity circuit and putting in the infrastructure. We anticipate spending about 36 million Australian in the next, uh, say, five months till we get to production. So m our main focus right now is spending money on getting into operation. That said, we still have ongoing exploration both at Edgina, Garatha, well, as well as the rest of the Pilbara. We have a lot of greenfields right now. So. Okay, great to hear. So the final question here from uh, Don Kim here on the this side. Uh, let me. Uh, what's the what's the difference? Uh, because you've been working with a number of uh, projects in the, around the world in terms of working on the field projects in Western Australia compared to other places like South Africa or other South American or other places in the world. Look, uh, I'm, I find it a pleasure to work in Australia. It's the best jurisdiction to work. And I made this choice very consciously about 10 years ago when we started Noble. Uh, I recognize Australia as a place you can build mines and you can get return uh, on your capital. And it's not to say you can't in other locations. I'm just saying that Australia is a place where you can fast track things to production. So I see, see it as a very favorable jurisdiction. Great to hear. I think you nailed the point there. Uh, thank you, Quinton, for your time here today, sharing your story of Nova, Nova resources to us. Thank you for your time, Quinton. Thank you. See you, Gilbert.